Hi Angels, it's Haley Reese and for today's video I am kind of coming at you with a real life experience as far as the Midnight Man game goes. I'll explain a little more in a minute but nonetheless I kind of feel like it's an important video to share and it's something to really talk about with you guys. Before I get into today's video though I would just very quickly like to share with you guys today's video partner Vanity Planet. So I actually wanted to share with you guys the Vanity Planet Ultimate Skin Spa System, which I've been using for quite a while now. If you guys have been on my channel for a while now, you guys know that I've been using the Ultimate Skin Spa System even back when I was in my blue room. I really believe it's a big reason why my skin stays super clear and I absolutely love using it. It includes a storage case, daily cleansing brush, exfoliating brush, and a silicone brush. Now I personally really enjoy using the silicone brush because the silicone brush is gentle enough for sensitive, dry, and acne prone skin. And while I don't have acne prone skin, I definitely have super sensitive skin and very dry skin. So if you guys want your own Vanity Planet Ultimate Skin Spa System, I will have a link down in my description. And the best part is using my code Haley Spa, you will receive it for 70% off, meaning that it will only be $39. But without further ado, let's get into what I wanna share with you guys today because it's not as lighthearted as Amazing Skin and it's definitely something that I kinda of just wanna sit here and chit chat with you guys about and really get your guys' opinions on. So basically, um, all throughout childhood, you guys know that you meet friends that will later probably become acquaintances because we grow up and we all kind of go our separate ways. And even though when you see each other in public, everything's good and fine and dandy, when you become an adult, it's not the easiest thing to stay in contact with everybody. With that being said though, I do have a personal Facebook that I like never use, but I still have it because sometimes I like to see what certain family members of mine that aren't on other social media are up to. But other than that, I very, very rarely ever check up on my personal old Facebook. For some reason, I decided to go and check up on my old Facebook and kind of look in those message requests. You guys know like, I don't know if you guys know what those are or if you use Facebook still, but basically there's a section, much like Instagram, where people are able to send you a request to send you a message. And that was when I saw this girl's name who I used to go to elementary school with, but I haven't seen her, oh God. Um, I couldn't even tell you how long it's been since I've seen her. Obviously, I wanted to click on the message and kind of see what it was that she was saying. And upon clicking on the message, it was super lengthy, which I'll be honest, kind of threw me off at first because I haven't spoken to this person in I don't even know how long. And to be receiving a message of that length, really freaked me out because I have anxiety, but um, I started reading the message and right away it gave me this really horrible, nauseated feeling in my stomach and I felt as though by the time I was done with it, I should share the experience with you guys. Basically, she started out by saying that she recently found my YouTube channel and that she really loves the paranormal, so she was super interested in watching my videos. And that was when she stumbled across my Midnight Man video. I believe it's titled Never Summon the Midnight Man or something of those sorts. She then proceeded to tell me this detailed story of the time that she actually summoned the Midnight Man and how very real he was. And the purpose of her message was to ask me if I felt as though there was any way that she could possibly remove the attachment or the bond that was created between them. We talked for a little bit and that was when I asked her if she would mind me sharing her experience here with you guys, just to kind of put into perspective what somebody says is their experience with the Midnight Man, but also because you guys have the most incredible solutions and ideas for things like this. And so I really encouraged her to go to the comment section and kind of read your guys' opinions on what she endured and is still enduring. She said that was totally fine and she would really appreciate it as long as I kept her anonymous and I did tell her that I was going to put this specific disclaimer in here. Basically, I am never somebody to ever hear somebody's paranormal experience and disregard it as fabricated or believe that it's fabricated because so many of my personal stories sound so unbelievable and I know to my very core that they are the God's honest truth and they are what I have experienced. 
With that being said though, I haven't spoken to her in I don't even know how long, like I've mentioned a million times, so I don't personally know the authenticity of this story. I am simply trusting the experience that she shared with me and bringing it on here to share with you guys. So you are totally welcome to have your own opinions on it, you're welcome to choose to believe it or to not believe it. But let's just get right on into it. Although it's not lengthy, it's definitely spooky. So she basically told me that a while back, her and a couple of her friends were dabbling into different practices and different religions and just trying to figure out their place as far as their spiritual beliefs. She basically said that where they went wrong was they were young and they weren't educated on each specific practice and the different religions and the different rituals associated with them. With them being immature and with them not understanding the depths of these practices, they went in with skepticism and a urge to provoke rather than open mind and a protected energy. She said that they started doing a lot of research into paganism and they really wanted to figure out where they fit into these things and really challenge everything to do with it. And they began researching into different pagan rituals. They actually stumbled across the old pagan ritual of the Midnight Man and that was when they decided to test it. Now the Midnight Game was actually an old pagan ritual that was primarily used to punish those who had broken the laws of the pagan religion. It was mostly used as a scare tactic in order to prevent people from breaking these laws, but as I got into in my Midnight Man and the Midnight Game video, it is definitely heavily advised not to play. Her and her friends decided, like I said, that they were going to go into this and they were going to challenge the Midnight Man and challenge the Midnight Game in order to test its authenticity. And so that's what they did. They basically began by doing all of the steps and they proceeded to begin the game. Now, she told me that the pivotal moment that really changed everything for them and when they kind of started to realize that it was real was when their candles began blowing out and there was no apparent cause for it. Now they immediately relit and they continued to walk around but that was when they all saw this shadow go by that they all saw at the exact same time despite having been looking different directions. She said it was at this moment that they began hearing like this whispering, but it sounded like it was in like another language or something of those sorts, and they all panicked. And instead of doing exactly what you're supposed to do in a ritual in this particular ritual, they ran out of the house and went and stayed in another girl's home. Ever since that day, she still hears like this whispering in the dark every now and then. But most of all, she feels like any time she's in the darkness that there's something, some sort of a shadow whispering figure creeping up and onto her. And while it hasn't caused her any physical harm, and while it hasn't really confronted itself with her, every time she's in complete darkness for too long, she said that she feels like it's getting closer and it's gaining more control, which are her exact words. That is basically her entire experience. There's no like crazy twist or turn of events, just that they heard whispers after seeing a shadow and they made the mistake of ending the game improperly and running out, which they never closed it out and they never concluded the game. And now whenever she's in the pitch black, she feels as though he's around. I think one of the biggest problems with any paranormal game is it's very easy for you to spook yourself. It's very easy to spook yourself even if there is nothing there. Believe me, I've done it before, especially as a child. So a lot of times you may not actually know that you summon something, spook yourself and not conclude it like my friends did with the Ouija board when we were younger. And now you've left something in your reality that was inconcluded and the door is now wide open. I mostly wanted to share this experience because if it really is her true honest experience with the Midnight Game and the Midnight Man, I thought it was kind of interesting to see what somebody's experience was like that perhaps did it wrong, although it breaks my heart that they wouldn't have concluded it properly and that perhaps there may be something lingering and I don't know. Well, you guys, that is her experience with playing the Midnight Game and summoning the Midnight Man. My greatest advice to any of you guys, if you are going to play a paranormal game or do any sort of ritual, to make sure that you follow the steps step by step and that you end it properly. There is nothing 
more dangerous than leaving open a door that you have no idea what is on the other side. That is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness, and until next time, I love you guys. Mm -hmm.